interesting. Let's see here. Mailworks is streaming. Watch now. Woo! All right. All right, there's a bit of a delay there. And okay, we'll focus on that in a little bit. All right. Hi, Barb. All right, there's a bit of a delay there. And okay, we'll focus on that in a little bit. Rot row. I don't know if that worked. Hey, Josh, how you doing? All right. Hi, Barb. All right, there's a bit of a delay. Okay. There. I want and the volume from the computer. Okay, off. we'll okay. focus on that in a little bit. Rot row. I don't know if that worked. All right, I'm gonna share this stream. Hey Josh, how you doing? Right. Hi Barb. All right, there's a bit of a delay. A, it says I got a new share. There. Okay, so Sean I White has shared your stream. The volume from the computer. Okay, I'm gonna double we'll... check that. Okay. Come on, Focus internet. On that. A little bit. Rock I wonder well it's going. How's it going on? Uh, Twitch? I don't know if that worked. There we go. It's going. Right. I'm gonna share this stream. Okay. Hey Josh, how you doing? Right. Hi Barb. All right, there's a bit of a delay. I got an, it says crap. I got a new share. There. There. Okay, so hi, 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 Sean White has shared your stream. The volume from the computer. Just finished the okay. okay. bit. Make the chain now. All right, come on, internet. On that. A little bit. It works. Well, well, it's going. How's it, it going on? It, uh, it I don't know if that worked. It shared to where it was go. supposed to go. It's going. All right, I'm gonna All share right. this stream. Hey Josh, how you doing? All right. Hi Barb. All right, there's a bit of a delay. I got an, it holy says crap. I got a new I share. There. Okay, yeah. so I have Sean White has shared your stream. The volume from the just finished okay. the okay. bit. Making the chain yeah. now. I All right, come on, internet. Turn it off. Turn it back on. It's working. Well, well, it's going. How's it going on? Uh, I don't know work. if that worked. It shared okay. to it where it was supposed to go. Thank you. It's going. All right. I'm going right. to share this. Right. Hey, Josh, how you doing? All right. Hi, Barb. All right, there's a bit of a delay. It says I got a new share. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah. Sean White yeah. shared your share. Right. The volume from the computer. Just finished the question. Okay. Okay. Making the chain now. I'm going to restart. Right. Right. Come on, it's internet. Turn it off. 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 It's going. All right. I'm going right. to share right. this. Hey, right. right. Josh, how you doing? All right. Hi, Barb. All right, there's a little bit. It says I got a new right. share. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Is the echo stop? Sean White has shared your share. The volume from the computer. Just finish the okay. question. Right. I would like to know if the echo has stopped. I'm going to restart. Right. Right. Come on, right. internet. Right. 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 What was happening? What was going on? What was going on? I don't know if that worked. I shared where it was supposed to go. Thank you. It's going. All right. I'm going to share right. this. Right. 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 Hey, Josh, how you doing? Right. Hi, Barb. When I speak right. to it, it says I got a new right. share. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Is the echo stop? Sean White has shared your share. Right. Right. Volume from the Just finish the question. I would like to know if now. the echo has stopped. I'm going to restart. Right. Right. Come on, internet. Is it still going to happen? It's still going to happen. 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 I don't know if that worked. I shared where it was supposed to go. Thank you. It's going. All right. I'm going to share right. this. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Right. Hi, Barb. When I speak right. to him, I got an old set of new share. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so is the echo stop? Sean White has shared his share. Right. Do volume twice. Just finish the question. I would like to know what I'm doing. It has stopped. I'm going to restart. Come right. on, internet. Is it still going to happen? It's still going to happen. 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 I don't know if that worked. I shared it. It's where it was supposed to go. Thank you. It's going. All right. I'm going to share this. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Hi, Barb. When I speak right. to him, I got an old set of new share. Yeah. Okay, so is the echo stop? Sean White has shared his share. Right. Do volume twice. Just finish the question. I would like to know what I'm doing. It has stopped. I'm going to restart. Come right. on, internet. Is it still going to happen? It's still going to happen. 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 I don't know if that worked. I shared it. It's where it was supposed to go. Thank you. It's
Did I just delete my stream? Okay, how about now? Someone tell me if now it's working. An infinite loop of uh of never ending Let's see if I can pull this up here. Okay. No more looping weirdness. Okay. All right. I had a couple of pages open that had me talking on there. So probably I imagine what happened is uh, there was some feedback going on in the computer of some kind. Okay. Well, alrighty then. Let's get started, shall we? Okay. Alright. So, if I don't get to your comment, don't worry about it. We have, guys, we have, we have two cameras now. I would like for everybody to meet Frank. Say hi, Frank. This is Frank. Frank is a, uh, hybrid between a tripod and a uh, webcam that I was working on all morning and it came out it worked I was so happy with myself <coughs> you were starting to hear more voices in your head than you could handle in addition to all the voices that were already there. All right. Yes. So that's Frank. I spent about two hours this morning configuring him. I figured this camera is a better camera than my web camera built into my computer, but the mount that this guy had um, was not uh, was not working on my computer, so I tore the mount off, changed out um, a couple things, and then I was able to uh, press fit a nut into where uh, the old mount was at, and. Uh, it was able to screw onto the tripod pretty easily. It was a very disconcerting experience. Well, I'm sorry, guys. Now I know. I won't have uh, other stuff open. I wasn't sure. I just wanted to make sure that everything worked out, you know. So, and I can't see what is, uh, like, we're on a couple platforms, and I can't see everything that goes on on every platform. I should be able to see what goes on in at least two of them. So, anyway, we'll get there. Right now we got, uh, Frank is Frank is just sitting right here, right? And so the next step is to uh, get an overhead camera with a good zoom, right? Because Frank, Frank cannot focus on detail up close right kind of far away it works out but uh, no detail up close is not not working for him but you know what we've got a camera on my face a camera on my hands by golly we're gonna get somewhere so thank you for hanging out during the first five minutes trying to figure that out I do appreciate it All right. 
one ring, two ring, red ring, blue ring. Hmm. Gonna try and learn how to keep my hands on camera so that people can see what I'm doing. So what's everybody else up to tonight? Obviously I'm doing this. I spent the day watching uh, three of the Home Alones, which was fun. I don't think I'd seen the third one before. And I've only seen the first one. I'm sorry, I've only seen the second one like once. When, when, Kevin, Miss, uh, when Kevin McAllister was just a wee child. All right. You're adding, anodizing some titanium tags for a customer. Right on. Finished a dragon sculpture. Congratulations, that's awesome. You're crocheting. What are you crocheting? You should you should be grading papers, but you're not. Oh. Am I am I sensing a pattern of behavior? Tell you what. You give me a call when you're done grading those papers and I will uh just pause streaming until then. It's <laughs> It's nice to know I'm more entertaining than grading papers, that's for sure. Uh, watching the Star Wars trilogy. There you go. You're very welcome, Barb. A Swiffer cover. Nice. That makes a lot of sense, you know. Crocheting a Swiffer cover. Cover? A Swiffer cover? as opposed to just continually buying the ones you throw away. I have like a dust mop with, uh, cause I have, I have uh, some wood floors upstairs on the main floor. And um, I have a dust mop with like um, washable covers that go over it and they're great. When I, re when I remember to use it, right? You'll get those papers graded? Okay. I, you know, I mean, I'm just hanging out making chain mail. I can, I can stop for a day or two so that those kids can get them grades. All right. So what do we think of the two cam streaming so far? Aside from the massive uh, echo <coughs> that uh, plagued us in the beginning. Do you like it? Is it, do you think it's a good move? I think it's a good move, but you know, I'm not the one trying to entertain, or I'm the one trying to entertain people here. So, you know, a little feedback from the old audience, uh, definitely be nice to get, you know what I mean? I think that next time if I want to uh, monitor what's going on on different uh, platforms, I will use like my phone or um, my tablet. You like it? Two cam streaming is great. So far so good. Not old, old, O-L-E, like the old day pub. I think it means the same thing as old. I don't know. <laughs> O-L-D-E. It's, it's Middle English or something like that. I don't, you know, I think it means like the standard as opposed to uh, 
an age thing. I could be wrong. Gives you a reason to get a second camera and a mic. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. It kind of does mean the same thing. I Yeah, I, I'm just bullshitting. I think it does mean the same thing, too. But no, I don't want to call anyone old. You should absolutely get a second camera. It would be, uh, it's, it's tremendously awesome not to have to sit here and worry about pulling the webcam down so it can view the desk while trying to read the comments at the same time. Old means you're both old and Southern. <laughs> you know, a, uh, cause this was, I started this morning making Frankenstein's camera monster here. Um, and now that it has had some work done, um, you know, a little Dremel work, a little uh, drill work. It's got some hardware installation in it now. The fact that I didn't break it while trying to, uh, <laughs> while trying to get it placed onto this tripod was quite surprising to me. Somebody put something slippery on that ring. <coughs> I have a second monitor for that, but it also means when I tilt the camera up, I end up looking off to the side and not directly at the camera. Yeah. That is kind of weird. All right. So I'm happy because we're we're streaming on a couple different platforms. And I will go back and check the video later. Um, and then we have two cameras. That's a start, right? How many weekends we've been doing this now? Three, four. And we've already come so far. I'm quite happy with that, actually. The idea that, you know, when you have an I when you have a goal, right? You really and, okay, when you have a goal and you don't know how to start it, someone is putting something slippery on these rings. When you have a goal and you don't know how to start it, right? Honestly, I have found that it is just better to start it no matter, you know, what equipment you have. Some things are impossible, right? But, you know, when I first started making chain mail, I didn't have a lot of tools. So I used what I had. When I first started this stream, I didn't have a lot of tools. I still don't, right? This isn't much. This is a basic setup. Um, but in a couple of weeks, here we are, right? I'm pretty happy about it. I'm further ahead on the tech side of than you are for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's a mat. Gnomes did it. Yeah. I better not have gnomes. It's like bed bugs. <laughs> you don't want those. Um, well, Josh, like I told you uh, the other night, get with me uh, off stream, and I will send you um, the link for how I set this all up. It's fairly simple. A lot of people, you know, they use it to, to play their video games and stream and stuff. So, you know, it's not hard. For, for you, I really think it's just a matter of an extra camera, you know, and then download, downloading the software. You know? But 
dessert is fun. All right. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Exactly. Gnomes are better than gremlins. I'm going to take your word for it. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I have I have no problem getting with you on that. Later on. You know, spread the knowledge, man. Spread the knowledge. Like, I, I, I'm very happy with the fact that uh, we got the two camera stream going, right? And you can really kind of see what I'm doing on camera. And you can almost tell that it's it's chain mail, right? Like just almost. Even with that said, the setup that I have is still very limiting, right? I can only do like 30 frames per second. And um, my internet is still re really bad here in the basement. So my upload speed is not uh, anywhere near where I would like it to be, but we'll, you know, we'll fix that. And we'll, we'll get, you know, and we'll invest more in better cameras. So we'll get there, you know. You want to have a two camera setup to do an anodizing stream as well as a regular chain mail stream? Heck yeah, man. I would watch an anodizing stream. Those are fun. I definitely want some, uh, you know, 60 frame per second cameras. I'd like about, I don't know. A dozen of them and then we can just uh, go along this hole or let me show you all right we can go along all these tables here and work on different things right that there's a table on the end with a receiver on it then there's the white table, and then there's the leather table next to me with all the alcoholic beverages on it. And then there's the desk where all this stuff gets done. So I'd like to have, you know, a camera on each of them just so I can hit like a hot key and transfer cameras. You would like to learn how anodizing is done, Barb? I think for titanium, it's fairly simple. It's aluminum that I guess is like, can kill you. So you gotta be really careful. I am only interested in rings anodized by other people. Wow, man. anymore I'm like one of the first chainmail projects I ever did I uh, bought a bunch of galvanized steel fence wire from Home Depot and this is the way a lot of people start out right and of course this was also 24 years ago back in 96 um, so I bought a roll of uh, Home Depot wire and started coiling um, galvanized steel wire that was uh, making 3 8 uh, rings. I think it was 14 gauge 3 8 rings. And <coughs> I spent, woo, alcohol. Yeah, you know, Saturday. 
I spent a, a ton of time um, cutting my own rings and coiling my own rings. I even have a special drill for coiling, right? And I probably did somewhere in the neighborhood of like, oh, probably somewhere between 40 and 50,000 rings. Not all for the shirt, obviously, but you know. Of all the all the coiling and clipping that I did, uh, probably about forty or fifty thousand rings. And uh, I will I will never make my own rings again. I have zero interest in doing it after that. I didn't find the Ring Lord until two thousand four when I was out in Iraq, and you know that's when I I really started making it. A lot of chain mail. I think I've done about a million rings at this point with various projects. I, I think I have about half a million sitting here in the basement. Right, so between that and stuff that I no longer own, I made arrangements to watch an auto shop guy do aluminum for his high school auto mechanic students, but then COVID canceled his classes. That sucks. COVID canceling everything. Yeah, I've never seen it done. I know, you know, it's quite the process from what I understand. But without, uh, you know, people that make, I'm, I'm quite convinced that people that make rings Making rings is a different hobby than making chain mail. They're re related, but they are two very different skill sets in a lot of ways. Yeah, anyone can take a wire and wrap it around, around a mandrel, but you know. You never wanted to make rings, and while anodizing is tempting, it's too involved chemically for me to want to invest a setup and try to do it. Yeah, me too. Maybe, maybe titanium one day. Anodized, no. Because titanium you can do on a desk setup. You know? Just, we could do it right here. You could watch. Like what Josh is saying he wants to do. We're getting somewhere on this wine bottle. I don't know where really. But it's somewhere. Hopefully. Okay, I shouldn't say we're getting somewhere on this wine bottle. I should clarify. We are getting somewhere on this piece. Because in reality this may not end up on the wine bottle because we may run out of rings so we will see how far we get and then we will make a determination as to what to do with it at that time so we are getting um we're getting somewhere on this patch sarah it's so similar to buying supplies and actually using said supplies is two separate hobbies yeah, exactly. I have a lot of supplies. That's a very fun hobby. All right, Barb, have a good night. Yup, I got a lot of supplies. A lot of tools. Buying them and using them are two different things. I'd like to get to use them all. We just... uh. I say we, Renee just had the floor of the garage sealed and it looks, it looks awesome. It looks amazing. 
cold as hell out there, but uh, it's it's nice to. It looks much nicer now that the garage floor is sealed, right? And I don't want to put like all my woodworking tools back in there necessarily because they will just make a mess of things if I try and use them in there. So, and also we have a, a car in there right now. Because we got, I have my truck and my motorcycle and my work vehicle. And uh, so we put Renee's car in the garage. And so there's really no room for my, any of my woodworking tools or metalworking tools that I have that we had thrown in the shed so that we could get the, like we cleaned out the garage of all the tools and junk and crap and threw it in the shed that we had put up this summer. And there's really just no room to put them back, you know? So I don't know how much uh, I'm going to be able to use other tools. It's fine. <coughs> it will be fine. Figure out how to use them. It's got to warm up first before I want to use them anyway. I don't want to be outside right now for the next six months. I'm a very cold and tolerant person. Um, and Wisconsin weather and me do not agree. So... I will take my vitamin D supplements and I will uh, make chain metal streaming videos down in the basement until uh, till it warms up outside I cannot uh, Anytime it gets below about 40, I'm done. Because here, we live uh, about two miles from Lake Michigan, and it's always windy. And, uh, yeah, 40 with a wind chill, a very humid wind chill, and not, like, hot humid, like, cold, wet humid, right? It gets very cold. Feels like it's 20 degrees outside. You know, you drive 10 miles uh, down the highway and, you know, there's a, tw a noticeable difference. But, uh, yeah, here it's, it's just wet and cold. And I am not inclined to deal with it. That that ring doesn't belong over here. It's an imposter. I am digging this two camera setup. I really am. Oh, got to keep the hands on the on the camera. I'll figure it out or I'll adjust the camera to figure it out. All right. <coughs> That's one row done. Okay. There's our pile. So we got that and whatever's left in the bag and 
I mean, it'll make a decent patch of chain mail. It's just, I don't think it's going to be enough to cover up a wine bottle. We'll see. Might become a dice bag. And that's not the only ring size we're using either, so... I just want to cover the bulk of the bottle with the 18 gauge 3 16 in theory, you know. You know it, don't you know? Little Babby's mom coming out. Nope, that's the wrong ring. What have I done here? There we go. Someone put my rings in the wrong order. There. Fixed it. my phone buzzing for oh, I've got a notification of some kind I wonder what's going on actually I want to check something real quick working all right sorry about that okay all right yeah digging the two cameras set up I'm glad I was able to get it you know working now that we know about the feedback loop, we can avoid that in the future. It's like the fire swamp in the Princess Bride, you know? R-O-U-S's? I don't think they exist. Bam! That would have been too funny. Alright. Now that we know the dangers of the feedback loop, we can live here quite comfortably. I don't think that I have another movie that I have seen and enjoyed every time I watch it as much as I have The Princess Bride. We grew up and watched it over and over and over again until we ruined the VHS tape and then we bought a new copy and I think all of my siblings and I have copies. Between uh, The Princess Bride and The Sound of Music, it was uh, lucky that we watched anything else ever. Because all his kids enjoyed The Princess Bride, and my mother enjoyed The Sound of Music. And I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've watched both of those films, but it's probably upwards of 500 times. Easy. And I can't think, I can't think of another movie that I've watched that many times. Uh oh. I don't know if I closed that correctly. Oh man. I saw one of those, uh, <laughs> one of those websites that sell the uh, Byzantine. 
It's hands down one of the best movies of all time. I think so. Um, I won't mention the name of the website, but they had they had Byzantine, right? And let me see if I can get the camera to focus on this. It's like a Byzantine necklace with... Uh, Byzantine chain that has two wolf heads on either side that goes down to a Mjolnir, right? And I'm, I'm not kidding, okay? Some of the closures in it, I don't know if you can see that. There, some of the closures in that necklace were that bad. I refrained from saying anything, um, but it was very tempted. You can nearly quote Monty Python, The Holy Grail, but Princess Bride was probably a close second. Yeah. I haven't... I've seen the Monty Python, The Holy Grail a few times. Not enough to quote it, but when I was... One, one time when I was at church camp, we had a kid... Um, as we were all trying to go to sleep, damn near recite the whole movie from memory. And this is like, oh, how old was I? 14 or 15. And yeah, at church camp, I think the camp counselor had to stop him at the line, and now comes the oral sex. I think that's I think that's when our uh, counselor had to shut him down, <laughs> if I remember correctly. It's just a flesh wound. You think you might know what company I'm talking about? They're they're not a small company. And they're not the only company doing it, right? Like, there's a lot of uh, pages that do the Viking thing, right? And um, I found one that you would like, Josh. I'll send it to you. Um, it's got, like, a rune translator on his page. Uh, rune definitions and stuff. Um and what, what caught my eye was uh, the copy that he used, the ad copy. It was like, I started this, I started, whoa, whoa, whoa. Another slippery ring, man. So in the ad, the ad copy, right, like what this person wrote um, to get people's attention. And um, it was... I started this because I'm sick and tired of seeing, you know, my heritage just very crudely and poorly done by, you know, shitty internet marketers that are just trying to make a buck. So now I make, you know, really good designs. And I'll I'll send you the link. You need someone in college who could recite the whole movie invariably did at any time you watched it. Yeah. You couldn't watch it if she was around. I know people like that. Well, they happen to be located across the pond. Um, that I don't know. Damn gnomes. Damn gnomes is right. I don't know where they're located. I assume that the product they're selling is from across the pond. The Pacific Pond. Um, just because it's like, it's like the same shitty Byzantine necklace that all those, uh, Viking theme stores sell. So, but you know, I whenever whenever I find something of interest online, I always like go to AliExpress to check and see if it's the same thing. AliExpress is a website in China. Um,
that it's like the Amazon of China, basically. And Jack Ma, the owner of AliExpress and Alibaba.com, um, he's like the Chinese Jeff Bezos. So I always go over there and see if uh, they have stuff selling, if, if what I'm looking at is available on there, right? And I order, I order a bunch of stuff off of there too, because generally it's the same thing and it's cheaper. <coughs> so. Something is wrong with this ring. It's not really a ring. It's an oval. It won't work. Crap made in India from Galvi. One of the reasons I've only ever sold two Habricks. Oh, yeah. You know, I, you know, I mean, people don't know. You know? And so they buy that stuff. If I was a 14 year old kid again and I saw a chainmail hauberk, wouldn't matter to me where it was made from, I would be like floored. And I consider myself having been um, quite young to having been exposed to the fact that you can make chainmail, you know, with tools and supplies you can find at home. I don't think everybody gets that opportunity, which, you know, that's why I'm here doing this. Because I want, you know, to create content so that people know what chainmail is, so that they, they get addicted to making it, and then they come to my store and they buy my stuff. And then... I don't know if you know this, but my stuff is, uh, I'm not going to say it's addictive to own, but it's a lot of fun to own. And I get a lot of return customers. So, I don't, I don't put anything in the material that's addictive, but a lot of people come back for more. It's impossible to sell a suit of armor for what it's really worth because you can buy it on Amazon for a hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah, it's always poorly made and made from inferior materials and you know. You can tell people that till you're blue in the face, you know, and until they experience it for themselves, it's one of those things that's just like uh, you can't change their mind, right? You just can't. So I don't, I, I got into an argument with a guy who, uh, he worked with metal and he told me that, uh, brass was stronger than stainless steel. Like how, how could you come to that conclusion? And didn't matter what I said, none of it could not convince him otherwise because he knew he knew brass was stronger than stainless steel. It's like, oh, okay, buddy. Yeah, they don't understand the phrase, you get what you pay for. No, they don't understand. And, you know, a fool and his money are, a fool and their money are soon parted. Right? So, you, you got to learn to figure out, you know, what's garbage and what's not. I think, you know, with, with the development of warning labels, um, people's bullshit detectors that they wouldn't normally have without them... Um, 
I think we're we're losing it evolutionarily, right? Like, there's too many warnings in the world of things that can kill you, so people don't really learn what can kill you, and so their ability to sniff out like what can kill them has uh, evolved away. Yeah. You spit out a small amount of beer. Don't waste beer, Josh. No, I mean, but seriously, right? Like, if you create a world where all the... Okay. The, the intelligence quotient is measured on a bell curve, right? The median is in the middle, and half the people are smarter than the people in the median, and the other half are dumber than the people in the median, right? Now, if you create a world where all of the people survive every encounter that they have in life, right? Like, the kid that's going to eat the paste or eat, eat the poison under the sink, right, is... Well, he's not going to do that now because of warning labels. Not that I would want any kid to eat poison. I'm just saying there's no natural uh, deterrence to him doing that or not doing it anymore for people to learn. You know, every kid should stick a fork in an outlet at least once. They won't do it again. Yeah, remove the warning labels and let nature sort itself out. That's you know, you know, I'm I'm just saying. We've uh, we've got all the warning labels and now people are, are unable to tell you know what things are gonna take their money for a ride and what's not. Or what's gonna kill them and what's not. I'm you know. It's, just, it's, it's a theory. It's a working theory. I'm not saying I'm right. Uh, you know, it's just something to think about. Don't pee on the electric fence. Don't pee on the electric fence. I have a very, very expensive pair of handmade steampunk glasses, of which like 40 were made, right? And I paid a significant price for them. Um, by accident. I didn't understand how, uh, as Bobcat Goldthwait got in trouble for saying on SNL, natural selection. It's only natural. <laughs> yup. I didn't understand how eBay worked back in the day. Like, uh, a seller would have two accounts that would, like, up, bid up, you know, to a certain point, a uh, certain price point that they wanted. Um, I was fairly young and inexperienced with the ways of the internet. And, I mean, at least that's what I think happened, right? So, I ended up paying a pretty penny, but these are handmade, signed by an artist. Steampunk goggles. Yeah, steampunk goggles. And they are very cool. And I was very happy to pay that price. But, knowing what I know now... I would probably pay a similar price, but I would uh, try not to get fleeced by someone using uh, eBay. So, all right.
we are at 55 minutes already? What? It's crazy. Okay. Now, supposedly, um, I'm using Streamlabs OBS, something broadcasting system. And um, so, supposedly, right, like, we'll, we'll get like an outline coming, I think, if I download a theme. That'll be cool. On. Let's see here. Yeah, okay. There should be a chat. I don't know if it's on your screen or if, uh, what platform you're watching from where it should appear on the screen. So, I will do some more digging into, uh, what do you call it, into Streamlabs here. See if we can't make it a little more entertaining. Um, but you know, for for a first trial run, really, I'm quite happy that the microphone worked, the cameras worked, and uh, I'm streaming from like the deepest, darkest corner of my basement, and it seemed to work for most people. You know? So, I think it's great. Quite, quite, quite happy. You know, it's one of those things, like this is a, a small goal that we've managed to attain this year. Didn't make many other goals this year. I didn't get the designs I wanted done. There's a bunch of stuff I wanna do. The app's not done. Still gotta, gotta work on that. But this, this we got done. We went from having a crappy webcam to a two camera stream and you know what? I'm quite happy with that. After the first five minutes of insanity. Yeah, sorry about that. I I had everything muted. So I appreciate everyone that hung out all throughout that. Borat, great success. Yeah, next time I won't, I will uh, use another device to stream those and monitor those. I should be, like, I want to see how they look, which, you know, I'll go do after the stream here right now. Um, but I want to go see how they look. Um, and make sure we're getting comments from those platforms and that uh, everything's going through successfully. So I will do that next time. But I have like a, a tablet I can watch it on and stuff. And my phone and we'll avoid the feedback loop of never-ending insanity. All right, and then one of these, uh, I think we'll be able to add like some music or something here soon. I gotta figure that out. Cause like, you know, I love talking to myself, but you know, What's up? What's up, Justin? How you doing, buddy?
which other platforms are you on at the moment? Um, YouTube, well, no, YouTube didn't work. Um, just Twitch at the moment. Just Twitch. You love the new camera setup? Awesome. I'm, I'm digging it. It's a step in the right direction, you know? People can see what I'm, what my hands are doing. They can almost kind of tell that this is actually chain mail. So, <clears throat> it's it's a very nice setup for what it is, as far as I'm concerned. The fact that uh, I was able to take what I had and then someone sent me a microphone and camera was uh, just quite shocking. Very nice of them. I'm going to send him something. The Twitch name is uh, Mailworks, M-A-I-L-L-E-W-E-R-X. I think I have like three followers on there. I haven't spent a lot of time developing that channel yet. Um, there will probably be like uh, Twitch only streams in the future. One day, maybe, I don't know. That's not what I want. <laughs> Just so I can build a little bit of an audience over there. Um, uh, okay, before I get to say it, thank you for the awesome post earlier today. You made my day. It actually gave me inspiration for something cool to do on my Facebook page. Absolutely, man. You deserve all the credit for that, right? Like, Okay, sure, it's my design, but the way that inlay turned out in real life is just, it's awesome. I'm about to have four. Well, thank you, Sarah. And five. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate it. Twitch is a fun little platform. There's a lot of cool stuff like you can do for audience members and whatnot. And I know uh, Gus is over there. So... I don't think he's the only chainmail streamer on uh, Twitch, but he's one of, you know, very few. Hello, you're a new subscriber. Hi, Joseph. Okay, follow you now on Twitch. Thank you. You guys rock. You are a new subscriber. Right on. I like new subscribers. So Joseph, do you make do you make chain mail? There's something interesting about the length of a stream, right? It's like when you first start, there's only a couple people. And then the longer you go, after about the 45 minute mark, people start really kind of showing up. I know, I know most of you have been here for the whole time, but. All right. Sorry, I keep taking my hands off camera. I'll get better at that. What's up, kiddo? Oh, I was stuck on you because I said they see me in a beer. Oh, you're bringing me a beer? Yeah, just in case you can use it. Good job, buddy. This is my son. 
Isn't he adorable? He brings me beer. He has him every single and all the time I'm a stinker. All the time you're a stinker. Get out of here. <laughs> Never. No, really. Never. Really. Go upstairs before. Never. Go. Never. Go. Never. Go. Never. All right. I'm going to call your mom. She's going to come down here and snatch you up like the Krampus. No. Go. Thank you, buddy. Love you. All right, where are we at here? <coughs> um, how often do I do these? I wasn't uh, to get into it, trying to get it, figure out what sizes to start with. Any suggestions? Yeah, Joseph, I got a lot of suggestions. So, okay. Um, the size I'm using right now is 18 gauge 316 stainless steel right it's a nice little pattern um, if I were to tell someone to start over a nice versatile ring that makes a plethora of different weaves is uh, like 16 gauge um quarter inch rings okay and I would start with uh, some aluminum and I wouldn't start with very much it's Krampus Knapp I don't know how to pronounce that Josh so 16 gauge quarter inch rings will make a very nice tight European foreign one. It'll make a very nice Byzantine. Um, <coughs> it'll make Trinity. It'll make um, half Persian three in one. Right? So that's like half a dozen weaves right there. Five weaves. Five weaves right there that uh, it can definitely do. Um, it can do elf weave. So it's it's a good quasi versatile ring size. I like it um, for a lot of different things, but it's it's big enough that you're not making micro mail, right? It's a it's a ring you can pick up pretty easily. You can see the closures of your rings when you close them. So I I hope that answers your question. If you're trying to get into it, there's a ton of suppliers out there. We've got Mail, um, The Ring Lord, a West Coast Chain Mail. I'm actually building an app to put all these resources into it. And that way, uh, you'll have, uh, people, people will have at their, you know, on their phone, suppliers, tools, tutorials, inspirational artists, and so on. You have a particular design in mind, a face mask that also goes over the head, sexy stuff. Who's the guy that does all that? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Um, what is his name? All right. Do you belong to the uh, the big chainmail group on Facebook, Joe? Do you belong to the the chainmail Facebook group? It's got about thirteen thousand people in it, right? There's, there's definitely some inspirational stuff in there. Demented Armory, how you doing tonight? You made a scale mail face mask recently. You know, I saw a bunch of people were making masks, right? Look. I have no desire to wear chain mail over my face. Let's see here. Um, 
Can you even see this? Let's see here. Let's see how close we can get here. Well, that's pretty good. You know? A little dragon scale, dragon scale mask here. That's about as close as I'm going to get to having any chain mail on my face. <coughs> yeah, go look up the, the big, it's just C-H-A-I-N-M-A-I-L-L-E. Oh, you can't post it yet because it's a gift and all the chain mail groups are, plub, pub, are they're public, so the person might see it. That's freaking cool. Yeah, that's that's one of the masks I uh, sell on my website. Mailworks.com You can find all sorts of chain mail themed goodies over there. More coming next year. Who is blowing me up over here? What is going on here? Oh. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha. You... I know who you are. I was getting pissed because my phone kept going off. <laughs> I thought there was an emergency. All right, let's see. You DM'd me the pic of what made... Uh, yeah. You sent me the DM and about four other notifications came in at the same time and I was like thinking something was going wrong. Or that my phone was just like randomly accepting notifications all at one time, which it will do that. If it uh, goes off Wi-Fi and then comes back on, like I'll go out for work and be off Wi-Fi all day and then come home and get like 50 notifications all at the same time. Doesn't always happen, but it's really annoying when it does because it, it just sits there and goes meh, 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 meh. So... Mm -hmm. Eyeball. All right. What? No. What is this? Don't do that. That is very nicely done. I like that a lot. Better than some of the other, uh, better than some of the ones I seen I saw out there. Someone tried to attach a mask to a mask, like a, a chainmail mask to a mask, and like it was okay, you know. Can't have my phone with me at work, so when I take my break or leave, your phone goes bananas. Yeah, exactly. Ow! Someone made these pliers slippery. What's going on? You did without a pattern. What's well, it? Looks good. It does. Gnomes again? Yeah, exactly. Sarah said a pattern. There are patterns. Yes, there are patterns. There are tutorials. There are um, instructions. Let's see here. I got a whole book up here by Karen Caron. Regarding uh, patterns, um, there's free tutorials at I think it's uh, chainmail101.com. Uh, 
Um, there's a lot of tutorials on Pinterest. There are a lot of uh, tutorials um, on Etsy that uh, you can purchase for different things. And um, most of them will give you a ring size and tell you what to order. Mailartisans.org, yeah, absolutely. They have patterns, toots, they have a weave library. You're welcome, Joe. It's a fun hobby. I always wanted to make a shirt out of 18 gauge 316s. Technically, the Trinity shirt is 18 gauge 316s, but that's square wire, right? And I think that uh, a shirt out of uh, this ring size would just be very nice, very light. I have a vest out of 16 gauge 316s. That was a bear. Hi Tara, how you doing? It's nice to see you tonight. vest well I've done my motorcycle vest right and I've got the Trinity vest I have the Trinity full-length sleeve shirt and the uh, half sleeved shirt then I've got another one I've got I've got a pile of 16 gauge quarter inch stainless steel blackened rings your birthday is tomorrow? I am feeling better. Thank you for asking. And happy birthday to you. I have a pile, or well, it's it's all woven together, 16 gauge quarter inch black and stainless rings. And with TRL changing up their uh, blackening process, I guess we'll find out what that new procedure is in six months or whatever it is. I'm, I, I guess I'm just going to scrap what I have of the shirt. I don't know what I'll make it into. I don't know what I can make it into. There's a ton of rings there, so I'm sure I can figure out something. Is Facebook my preferred platform? I will always stream to Facebook. Um, no, Facebook is not my preferred platform. It doesn't allow me to do as much as I want. And, oh. Um, but. It is, uh, it's good enough for what I'm doing now. So, we're, we're live on Twitch and we're going to be live on YouTube here pretty soon. So. Apparently you have to set up your YouTube live streams, which I didn't realize. And then when I tried to go live tonight, um, I was told it takes 24 hours to set up. So I was like, yeah, I'll worry about that later. I don't know if that's like to prevent people from randomly going live on YouTube or what. But 
I'll get it figured out, and then <coughs> we'll have we'll have the Facebook streams. We'll have the Twitch streams, right? And those will be like primarily audience building, and then the YouTube is archiving the videos and uploading them to the blog on the website to help uh, create content for SEO purposes so that when someone searches chainmail, you know, one day my name will uh, pop up on there. And then, you know, they'll go to my store and now they, they won't go to my store and say, ow, they will go to my store and buy stuff. Which reminds me, if you like the stream and if you want to support the stream in any meaningful way, go to mailworks.com. A lot of good stuff there. We're going to be making more next year. And uh, if you order something tonight, it might get there before Christmas. Most stuff that people ordered today should get there by Christmas. So, but really today's like the cutoff date. After this, I can't guarantee that it'll get there in time, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go get something because there's a lot of very nice fluffy blankets at mailworks.com and, uh, Everyone needs one to stay warm. Yeah, it works. M-A-I-L-L-E-W-E-R-X dot com. Your blanket is on the way. Yay. Hooray for fluffy blankies. I've got a couple of them. They're very warm. I like them. It's winter time here in Wisconsin, and I'm very cold and tolerant, and uh, I need lots of blankets to keep me warm. Joe, there is a website called chainmailjoe.com. I think that's it. And here's here's an option, a really good option. I think it's like a hundred bucks. They will send you a bunch of different ring sizes, like multiple quantities, not multiple quantities, multiple ring sizes, um, different quantities of rings and um, they have a, like a, a whole a whole starter kit for chainmail. I think it's chainmailjoe.com. Is this the wine bottle holder? Yes, this is the wine bottle holder that we're working on. We're getting there. We're gonna. I don't know if we'll run out of rings or not. Probably, but who cares? We'll figure out something else at that point. Actually, an idea just popped into my head. So, dangerous idea. Yes, Chainmail Joe products. Perfect. You have the kit, Tara? The piece I'm working on presently, how did that take? How long did that take? Um, okay, so last stream, one, two, three, I had done this much, roughly, right? I've added about an inch 
up top so far tonight. Um, and I think last stream we calculated that I had done four rings a minute, which is like 360 rings an hour. Something like that. Something weird like that. So, um, this is the second weekend we've been streaming. And I'm probably five hours into it. Maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> the kit saved you a bunch of money yeah no absolutely right because you can get really good at chain mail very quickly and you can start working in high-end materials very fast if you master the basics which you know are all easily accomplished with a little practice. And buying a kit like Chainmail Joe's that gives you, you know, multiple sizes of rings and tutorials all in one. It helps you make so many better decisions in the future. You know? You won't be you won't be some bum like me trying to work through all the old rings he has, you know, just so I can get rid of them. You're always looking for some size and then you remember Joe's box. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a good starter kit. I like it. If I had any interest in working with aluminum or was a beginner and needed to practice, uh, I would uh, definitely have bought that you know, when I was getting started. I think it's great. So from from everyone I've I've heard nothing but good things about it to those who have bought it. So cause that's one of the obstacles, right? Like I didn't know of any ring suppliers when I was 14 and first getting started I had to make my own and then by the time I had made my own rings I had or by the yeah by the time I had made my own rings and my first shirt I was just like to hell with making my own rings this is god awful so it really prevented me from doing a whole lot of stuff very early on And I think a kit like that, you know, for someone who's very interested in uh, making it, uh, making chain mail, that would be great for him. It was on sale for 80 bucks. Heck yeah. All right. We're getting down towards the end of this row here. I think chainmail is one of those things that everybody should have a basic knowledge of. You know? Just a little bit of know how. Not much. It's definitely uh, caused me to. Ch it's definitely challenged me to come up with different uh, solutions to things, right? Like, how am I gonna get this to fit around a bottle when I don't have enough rings? I'm already working on that, right? And I've got a plan that I think is gonna work. But, Finding the solution to 
to that quandary. You know, I don't know if, uh, well, I mean, obviously I never would have been able to do it without uh, learning how to make chain mail. It's a post-apocalyptic survival skill. Yeah, I used to have that on a hoodie and a t-shirt. I think I sold two or three of them. The text on t-shirts are coming back next year, I think. So I'm happy about that. Can do a little bit of uh, clean up on a bunch of the designs that I had. Work on them a little bit harder. And hopefully, because what had happened was, um, got a batch of t-shirts that uh, the design was coming off in the laundry and that was no good so I, just, I took them all off the website right because I don't want the apparel I'm selling falling apart on people I try to uh have as high a quality product as I can get. And those those t-shirts were not cutting it. The hoodies did fine for some reason. I never got a complaint about them. But next year. Not working on anything else until next year. Got some stuff I got to finish up this year. And just a little bit of time to do it in. Alright. Alright. Okay, boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen. We've got, I think we did three rows tonight, three additional rows, chain mail, right? Where's the wine bottle? It's going to go around a wine bottle. I can never like look at the screen and tell where my object is on the camera and how I need to move it, but I'm liking the way that looks and this covers up. You know, we, we might get to this part of the bottle and then we'll add some more down here and up here. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. So. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to slam those pliers down. Thank you all very much for hanging out. I am going to call it a night. Go to mailworks.com for all your chainmail themed apparel and accessories. Thanks for checking out the, the two camera stream tonight. Very happy we got that set up. Don't forget, we still have the Christmas concert, a Christmas concert, Christmas contests. You'd never know it was Boone's Far and Apple Wine. Yeah, that's right. We have the Christmas contest going on, which uh, involves wrapping a chainmail ball, uh, wrapping an ornament, a, wrapping a Christmas ball ornament in chainmail. Doesn't have to be tight on there like this one is, but it's got to be a wrapped, it's got to be a decorated Christmas ball. And those are. Entries are due by Christmas Eve, midnight and Christmas Eve, and the winner will be picked on Christmas, and they will get something from me. So, something from the Mailworks store. Thanks again 
everyone for hanging out, and I will uh, I'll probably see you tomorrow night if everything goes well. Do you guys have a good night? <laughs>